this final video on the Unicont Diversity One lecture focusing on fungi, we're going to be concluding on a great note of relevancy, something that I really, really enjoy about this lecture, and that is the ecological importance of fungi. So we're going to be entitling this next flowchart Ecological Importance. And again, there was a lot of information in this lecture, a lot of material to remember, but I think this is a great way to end this lecture because it shows us the facts that it's not just about memorizing these names, but understanding the importance that these fungi play in the everyday ecological roles that they have on the planet Earth. So let's get into them. Now, first and foremost, one of them that I alluded to in a previous video was the fact that most fungi, a lot of fungi, present themselves as decomposers. So these are individuals, fungi, that break down, as we've mentioned several times already, they break down non-living, things that are dead, in other words, non-living organic matter. And this is crucial for the ecological success of any single environment in question, okay? This is because if you break down this organic, non-living matter, you're actually going to be releasing, this releases inorganic nutrients, inorganic nutrients. When you think inorganic nutrients, think anything that doesn't have carbon in it, like nitrate ions, like phosphate ions, like minerals. All of those things are inorganic nutrients that are incredibly crucial into the respective ecosystem. In other words, I like to think of decomposers as those that keep everything clean. You have dead animals, you have dead organisms. Why don't they just stay there the whole time? They decompose. They don't decompose on their own. They don't just self-decompose. This is because there are things that are breaking them down into organic from or their organic cells into inorganic nutrients that the an entire ecosystem can use for other processes. The nice circle of life that these fungi play as decomposers composers. Nice role in the circle of life. Okay, what other important ecological roles do we have? We also have the fact that many fungi form mutualistic relationships. There are many mutualists in terms of the fungi world and their ecological importance. Now, let's just remember that in a mutualistic relationship, what the fungi will do is that they will get nutrients from the host, so nutrients from host, that's our first stipulation of this mutualistic relationship, so from host, but also there will also be, don't forget, a reciprocation. There will also be benefits to, to the host. So the host will get some benefits because it gave some nutrients to the fungi. So what do we see here? Let's look at some fungus-plant mutualistic relationships first. And we've covered some of these, but we'll reiterate here. Fungus and plant mutualistic relationship. Um, of course, we have the mycorrhizal fungi. We spent a whole flowchart on understanding the mycorrhizal fungi, and these are no exception to this rule. They are, of course, a mutualistic fungus-plant relationship. Um, that's all we'll say about them because we've already covered the type of relationship that these guys have. Now, another one that we actually didn't cover are endophytes. Endo fights. These are fungi that are within something. They are endo, and they are specifically going to be within a specific structure of plants known as the leaves. They are within the leaves, uh, or usually some, usually the leaves, um, sometimes other parts of the plants. We don't need to get into the details, but what is the purpose of these endophytes? Within the leaves, they actually don't harm the plant, and of course they don't because we're talking about a mutualistic relationship, so we'll just make this very clear. Don't harm plant, even though they're within this very important leaf structure. Um, but if you look at the endophytes, let's say, for example, in grasses. Um, let me rewrite this. Uh, in grasses, for example, we have endophytes. And within them, the fungi actually releases toxins. But remember... This is not going to hurt the plant. This is not going to harm the plant at all. But what is the purpose of releasing toxins? Toxins sound dangerous to both you and I. 
What is the purpose of this? This is simply going to be a deterrence. When you release toxins, this is actually going to directly deter, and it does deter, herbivores. Because grass has to sometimes not be eaten. It wants to succeed and just as much as everything else wants to succeed in the circle of life, in, the, in living on planet Earth. So what you do is you use the endophytes. The capability of them is that they release these toxins, and some of these herbivores don't like these toxins. So they stay away from eating these specific grasses that have established this nice mutualistic fungus-plant relationship. Now, in addition, endophytes also provide uh, plant tolerance, um, and this is going to be shown in a figure, the plant tolerance, and specifically to environmental stress. Plant tolerance, environmental stress. Um, take a look at figure 31.20 to understand this in a little bit more detail. Um, it's a good example of this plant tolerance that develops because of endophytes. Um, another type of mutualistic relationship is not just fungus plant, but also fungus to animal. Fungus with animal. That's another mutualistic relationship that these guys have in the entire ecology of the world. Um, what's a good example of this? A classic example is the gut of cattle. The gut of cows think. And within the gut of cattle, they have these fungi that live and get housed in this nice environment. And what do they provide for the gut, for the cattle specifically? They provide what they do best, break down. They absorb, they secrete these hydrolases. These hydrolases are very good at breaking down hard plant material like cellulose. Cellulose is impossible to digest unless you have strong enzymes that can break down that strong plant structure, that plant material, like cellulose. It's carbs. It has energy within it. You just have to be able to break it down. What's a good way to break it down? Use a fungus's capabilities with their hydrolytic enzymes, their hydrolases within the gut of yourself to break down the plant material so that you can absorb it and give the fungus a nice safe home within your gut. So that's our fungus animal mutualistic relationship. And finally, last mutualistic relationship to understand are of the lichens. Lichens we talked about in our Ascomyocetes flowchart. Look at figure 31.22 to really drive home the point of lichens. Um, I'll just reiterate that lichens are an ascomycete. They are that sac fungi, okay? Ascomycete that provides a habitat, provides a habitat. So this is a weird that the fungi now is providing a habitat, not the or the other animal. In this situation, the it seems like the animal is providing the habitat here, the leaf is providing, or the grass is providing the habitat here. The ascomycete provides habitat for a photosynthetic microorganism. So something much smaller than the fungus itself for photosynthetic microorganism like algae or cyanobacteria like algae, something like a protist maybe, or something like a prokaryote even, or cyanobacteria, both of which use their plastids to do some sort of photosynthetic micro, uh, photosynthetic metabolism. Um, this is going to be a mutualistic relationship because, uh, for one, they, the, the fungi, the lichens, they give... Uh, actually, excuse me, the photosynthetic uh, organisms, they give fungus carbon compounds. Carbon compounds like what? Like sugars, right? Because photosynthesis eventually results in sugars being built from the light mechanisms that we have, the light and non-light reactions. So they give the fungus these carbon compounds, and then this is usually found on the surface, these relationships, this lichen relationship is usually found on the surfaces of rocks, trees, and roofs. Now that's weird. Why is it found on surfaces? Because this is where the most sunlight comes. The most sunlight is found on tops of trees, on roofs, on rocks. And because there's tons of sunlight, there's going to be tons of photosynthesis. And if there's tons of photosynthesis, there'll be tons of carbon compounds to give to the fungus. The fungus reciprocates this per by providing 
a habitat, prov providing a home for these otherwise motionless, mean, almost so small microorganisms that can't do much on their own. Lichens provide a nice safe habitat in exchange for this carbon compound rent that these microorganisms pay for living on the Ascomyces itself. So those are uh, one, two, three major forms of mutualistic relationships that show the ecological interactions that we see.